Happy Friday Eve, it, everybody. I was going to say, today's Thursday. Sorry. <laughs> Friday Eve, everyone. It is Thursday. Don't be alarmed. We're so glad you're joining us today. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. We are glad that you're here on this Friday Eve. We're laughing course. because little Texie, you can bring him out, Beatrice. Little Texie uh, was hanging out with us right before the show. Ooh, you're yeah. warm. You must have been just outside. I know. He's been... He's uh, all fluffy and cute. He is... To build a bear. He is so much fun. If you guys haven't followed Tex on Instagram yet, by the way, he does have some fun adventures. I have a hard time even keeping up with him. The social calendar on this four-legged guy? He Seriously. Is, you guys should see the emails that go around. It is very, very involved. By the way, I love the tie-dye. Oh, this whole thing? <laughs> It's not old. <laughs> no, you know, we're going to talk about this today coming up on the show. It's the new fashion trend. You know, everything old is new again. We're bringing in the tie-dye for is summer. It's awesome. I want to make one of those. It would be fun to make. I have a feeling, you know me, I'm not crafty. I don't have a green thumb. So I feel like my tie-dye would be... I it think wouldn't you're be more good. crafty than you know. I'm My not. friends and I used to throw tie-dye parties in a park. The park is a great place to do it because then you, you don't, don't have like to worry it. about messing up your own stuff. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we would make things. We would tie-dye t-shirts and stuff. It was fun. I am totally loving this trend. So our friend Marzi uh, is going to be here in studio and talking to us about how to incorporate it into our wardrobe. I think we see things in the fashion pages in the industry and we're like, mm, we don't really know how to incorporate that into our real world. So we're gonna do that today. You know the neon story that you did a few weeks ago, yeah. also with Marzi, that when I first heard about it, I was sort of wondering, oh wow, is neon really a thing? But then I went to the Houston SPCA gala. There was a woman wearing bright neon green, yellow, a full-length dress, yeah. and she was, in my opinion, best dressed of the night. Yeah, clearly she watches the show. She got the memo. I, I think <laughs> you're the reason why she was wearing no. that neon. I, and I love neon. You know, there's something about neon or tie-dye, and I, you can definitely do subdued colors, but there's something about wearing bright colors. I don't know if you get this. I know you like to wear, I, that shirt I got you for Christmas has kind of this color palette it's in very it. very bright. There's something about wearing a good color or like around Easter time that it just kind of gives you a little pep in your step. A little kick in your step? No. Well, I'm gonna run to Target. I'm gonna grab a, like a white pack of t-shirts and make my own. Target, huh? Yeah. Yeah, they're run there. To... I went to Target today. Yeah? I did. What'd had you get? Little, well, I had a couple errands to run uh, before mitts. I came into work and I have a question for you and, and for everybody else out there as well. When it comes to shopping carts, what do you do with the shopping cart once you're in the parking lot? You know, there's, there's actual... You put it away. ...spots where those shopping carts go. You put it away. Okay, so today I was walking into a Target in town and I'm getting out of my car and it was early, so I got the first parking spot in the lane and there was a gentleman coming out with his shopping cart and he was gonna unload something, a, a box of some sort. I'm gonna call it diapers. It wasn't diapers, but it was sort of that size, right? Something large. Yeah, and um, he put that said box into the trunk and pushed the shopping no. cart in the, in the aisle, pushed it in the, in the parking lot. P pushed it so it could just like roll it just into another rolled car? It just rolled on down and I just looked at him. Where was it gonna go? It was probably gonna hit a car or something else. So I, I, cause I thought, oh, maybe he, it got away from him. Like, you know, I wasn't exactly sure. And no, he got in his car. So I walked three steps to go get <laughs> the cart, which by the way, the cart uh, return. return thing was a space away from his car. Oh man. Right? I mean, do you get, I don't know. I don't, I, I was, I said, I, I got it. Don't, don't worry. I got it. Super preoccupied. So I'm in the store for like 20 minutes, probably maybe I'd say 15 to 20, not longer than 20 minutes. And I come out and there is a shopping cart behind my car. It had to have been the same guy. Someone else left a shopping cart behind your car? So when I pulled in, I remember I said I got that first spot in the lane. There was somebody next to me in the second spot. The third spot was taken as well. The fourth spot is the cart return. I don't know. You know, I, I this don't know. has been one of my pet peeves for years because maybe there's been a time or two when I haven't put my cart back if this scenario was, I don't know, 
if the cart return was totally full and there were carts piled, I don't know. But I always make it a point to go and put my cart away. And I remember my sister and I were chatting about this once because she was in a parking lot in Arizona and someone just like let the cart go and it rolled into another car and like crashed into it. Yeah. And my sister had just gotten into her car and so she laid on her horn and like did this to the woman <laughs> to freak her out. Kind of, you know, I see you. But this is another example I think of adults behaving badly. Completely. And whether it's, I mean, if, if I'm at a restaurant or a, like a bust your own table type scenario, I always clean up after myself and kind of wipe down the table. I think it's sort of the, the same concept. You leave your cart because you just think, oh, well, someone else is going to deal with it. You leave your trash because you think, oh, well, someone else will yeah, clean we're just up gonna, after me. Right, exactly. So this is interesting because you can play along with us um, online at clicktovote.com. Do you return your shopping cart? 74% of you say yes. 25% of you say no, which I find very interesting. Thanks for being honest. I do know, like, in, in a mom or a parent, grandparent, caretaker situation, sometimes that can be tricky, right? You're loading groceries into your vehicle. You've got maybe a toddler and another child in a carrier. And you're forced with sort of that, do I put my groceries away? Do I have my kids out of the cart? Do I put the kids in the car and then yeah. walk all the way down? I get it. I mean, there's a lot of things happening. Well, maybe the guy I, this morning had five kids in the car. He, no, he didn't, because I looked. I watched him drive away <laughs> in his nice white Cadillac. His nice car. He wasn't worried about... Maybe he has a servant at home who cleans up after him, maybe. so he doesn't feel like he needs to clean up after himself in public. Yeah. You know? I don't know. I don't know. I, I just thought it was an interesting... But the stray carts in a parking lot, though, first of all, I don't think anyone wants anything crashing into their car, like a stray cart. And especially in Houston, the wind kicks up. That's all it takes. And you've got a runaway cart. Carts can run out into the street. Unless right. they have those magnetic stoppers on them. Right. Or what about the scenario when you're pulling into the space and you see, you know, an empty space, let's just say holiday time or Thanksgiving time when everybody's running to the store, and you see this, the parking spot and you're ready to pull in, only to find out there's a cart yeah. in the middle of that spot. Yeah, it happens all the time. But don't you see behavior all the time in public that just makes you sort of stop? I think that sometimes, I mean, I see it every day on the road. You know, people throw their trash out the window, throw a cigarette out the window. It's still trash, even though it's a cigarette bud. You throw it on the ground. Like, you're an adult. Clean up after yourself. Who do you think is going to yeah. clean it up for you? Just interesting. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Well, what's interesting, too, is that uh, we, since we started this piece, I'm hearing in my ear from a producer that we were actually able to obtain the surveillance footage from the parking lot. From morning, today? From this morning when you were at that grocery store. So here we go. It looks like, oh, oh my gosh. That guy what? literally just drove into the back of that. <laughs> He drove you into know, that cart and ran away. You know who that looks like to me? Wait, can, can we rewind that? Play it again. It, wait wait I, a minute. I didn't get a good. Uh, I didn't get a good visual on the guy. The guy looked vaguely familiar. Was that the guy in the in the Cadillac? No. This this guy looks a little different. He Carlos. <laughs> it's Carlos. Oh, oh my Carlos. word. What barn were you raised in? Dude. No one told you to put away your cart after using it? No. Oh, <laughs> Busted. You never know who's flying around. He's also wearing the same exact Because it was this clothes. morning. I went this morning. Wow. It was him. People pick up after yourself. I know. No one wants to do it for you. <laughs> I promise. We don't. Funny. But you know what? When you have experiences like that, though, Aren't you just glad you're you? Because as annoying as life can be, really, I'm serious. It's, I'm always grateful that my mom is the one who raised me and she taught me to put away my stuff. Put away your stuff, myself. be kind to others. It takes no time to put that cart away. It takes and a I second. felt, I felt bad for the car, like where that car cart was going to end up from the gentleman that just pushed it, you know? I felt bad for whoever's innocent car that was going to slam right into. Yeah, have a red mark. Carlos, do you feel bad for slamming into that car today? We <laughs> no. will we'll save that for the <laughs> commercial break.
Sorry. <laughs> okay, well, in addition to tie-dye on today's show, I can't wait for that segment. We're Super also going to be talking about mealtime. This can be a challenge for so many people, families, cookbook author and mom of two, Leanne Chetanier. She's back in the house. Look at that beautiful, beautiful parfait you can see on your screen right now. She's going to help us create beautiful dishes. They look good, they taste great, and maybe it'll help us avoid a few tantrums during toddler meal time. Yeah, you know, that could be tough for sure. Absolutely. It looks fantastic. Okay. Also, um, are you thinking about starting a running program or maybe you have a race, a 5K, a half marathon or the full marathon on your bucket list? We're going to tell you exactly what you need to do today to make that happen from the shoes to the fitness trackers, even how to set those goals. So if you're not running today, going to help you get started. Yeah, Dr. Aparicio is in the house, and he is the master when it comes to physical activity. Looking forward to that. Okay, guys, but first, peace, love, and tie-dye. This retro trend is making a huge comeback, and we are helping you work it into your wardrobe. It's coming up next. One of the hottest trends right now in fashion is tie-dye, and I hear there's a really cool fashion event going on right here, Sig's Lagoon, the coolest record shop in Houston. Let's go in and check it out. Okay, Marzi, thanks so much for taking time from your fashion shoot that you had today. We are back with another trend, and everything is all about tie-dye. 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 I had to wear it, you know. I love part it. Of it. So I found some too, just a fun little sleeveless t-shirt, but you say this stuff is all over from dressy to casual, right? Yes, and so, you know, it's summertime, so tie-dye, you know, it's back, and I think most people think, like you said, I have my t-shirt, I have my swimwear. Tie-dye shoes! But I just kind of want to show you that, you know, I do have a lot of that here, but it's also for dressy as well, dressy occasions as well. And the most shocking to me was Ralph Lauren did this tie-dye collection. I managed to snag all of the pieces. Oh. But I mean, it's it's literally with some of the best tie-dye that I've seen. And this is completely out of the box for Ralph Lauren, right? I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I think that goes without saying. Tie-dye pants, tie-dye sweater. And these are not only pants, these are sweatpants. I, I mean, I wore them and I wore them with heels. Yeah. You know, something I do. I put it together, my husband was a little nervous, <laughs> but I was really enjoying it. So who can pull this off? Who can pull off tie-dye? Anybody. I mean, we can break it down. It can be, you know, as much as something like this, like I do, or it could be broken down even uh, for an evening look, dare I say date night. Ooh, so the top pretty and, the and bottom. delicate. Mm -hmm. This I is ALC it. at Neiman's. And I mean, like I said, I love buying sets because they work together and then you can uh, work with them separately as well. Dang, that's, a, that's the shot. And then some of the swim that I loved, besides just swimsuits, you can have these cover-ups. This is really beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is great over a bikini, but can you imagine just a slip dress and then putting this over it and putting on a pair of heels? Yeah, super I'm all cute. for how many ways can you wear an item. <laughs> and I love this because normally you would think, like you said, very casual, a mm -hmm. t-shirt, because um, Gucci's doing the, the fun yes. t-shirt. Everybody, I mean, look at this. This is Alice and Olivia. So cute, the little um, Grateful Dead mm -hmm. Exactly. And I actually have another shirt to show. Speaking of concert tees, this oh. is made worn. I mean, is it made worn? Yes. And so this is available at the Webster and they literally just do album covers and talk about being in the right place. <laughs> Sig <laughs> Lagoon, you exactly. gotta be here to get your records. But yeah, so, they, and so they've caught on to the tie-dye trend as well and also the neon, so it's a combination of both. But you can get, I mean, from Biggie to Tupac to The Doors to Blondie. Okay. They have everything. And, and uh, that's also the same, my, my Jimi Hendrix. You've gotta have that. <laughs> what I think is great too, um, besides that, I mean, I love this. I'm gonna step over here. I mean, look at even yeah. just this fun blazer. So it, it, it's along with the tie dye, they're also calling it a watercolor trend. So it might not be a full on tie dye, but it kind of looks like it's been painted. So that's part of this trend here with the Lejean. And basically tie dye this trend we're gonna see throughout the summer. Yeah, I mean, it just started. It's gonna be building more and more in stores. And I have a feeling you're also gonna be seeing it going into fall as well. I mean, they're doing darker colors like this here. Oops. 
this t-shirt here, they're doing it with the black. So this would be so cool with leather leggings and a pump would be fun or sneakers. Okay. And then even here, like this dress. Can you get it out? Yeah. See, there's too many. We can't even pull it out. This oh, dress yeah. here. So cute with sneakers or with heels. So you're definitely going to see it going from bright colors moving into darker colors. And all fall. age ranges, right? You want to oh, see everybody yeah. in this? Girl, my daughter's going to be in it. I'm going to be in it. Now, fingers crossed, I can get my husband in it. Ooh, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see for that one. <laughs> one, two, one, two. <laughs> Uh, add the scrunchie. The scrunchie really completes uh, the look. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, Marzi is joining us in the HL studio. She is in front of her rack. She's got models waiting. She's going to share all these fantastic ways for you to mix in tie dye in your wardrobe for work or play when we come back. All right, we're back. It's all about tie dye today. Stylist Marzi is back with us to show us how to incorporate tie dye into our uh, our looks, even if we don't want to go head first. And your first model is a great example of that, Marzi. Yeah, a lot of people think tie dye. They think the groovy '70s right. it has to be flair, has to be crazy. But this is here to show you. This is super feminine. Uh, the girl that likes to wear a dress. It's a bright color, but it fades into neutrals. It can be worn with the heel. We styled it with flats, really cute embellished Miu Mews. The dress is actually mauve, And we threw, I like to color block, especially when it's a bold color. So we put this tie dye uh, purse as well with the neon. This is super cute. And again, that's for somebody maybe who doesn't, who's a little nervous about taking on but the But it's trend. so good even with all, like everybody's taking vacations this summer too. It's just something that's easy to pack. It's one piece. But if you are scared of color, this is also an option. This is Raquel Allegra. Oh, that's pretty. Um, yeah. It's more muted, more toned down. So if, if color scares you, this is also an option. It's available at a Bejas. Very and good. Then, and again, that can go with flats or sandals, right? Or heels. Okay. Or sneakers, the dad sneaker, the one yes. that people... So this I wanted to point out because some people have trouble, you and I, I'm sure, because <laughs> we're a little shorter, that uh, dresses don't typically fit or hit at the midsection when it's the way it's supposed to. So if you get a skirt and shirt combo, you can manipulate the length or where the skirt hits you and kind of create the um, illusion of a dress. Okay. But it fits you and it balances your body out for a long oh. torso or a short torso. That's a good tip. And Marzi, if Colby wanted to throw on a jacket, would a third piece of tie-dye be way too much? Not You're for asking. her. <laughs> <laughs> I would go big or go home. I think the a typical person might see this and put a white denim jacket over it, which is cute, but I'm all for tie-dye. I kind of, as long as you keep it in the same color range, it should work. Okay. Awesome. Colby, you look Thanks, fabulous. Colby. Thank you so much. We're moving over to Haley, who you just saw in our piece at Sig's Lagoon, by the way, and she was in that bright suit mm -hmm. and typical tie-dye, and today this is a little bit muted. Yeah, so I was styling a client over the weekend and she wanted me to give her some pieces that were easy to wear where she felt dressed up and on trend, but she wanted to wear sneakers and be comfortable. So I actually pulled this skirt from Neiman's, it's ATM. And what everybody has in their closet, what's very easy to do is the t-shirt. I kind of bumped it up and put a graphic tee, it says love. I kept it in the, in the same color scheme. And then, but what I did different is instead of putting the jean jacket as I did her, I found this short sleeve summer weather leather <laughs> for Houston. I mean, it's we, really cute. There is AC inside, so you do kind of have to prepare for it. And then uh, you were talking about putting tie dye on tie dye. I yeah. did that here. So it's the same color, you know, same colors, but it, it has a way of standing same out. Same family for mm -hmm. sure. And what you could do is say you already have, a lot of people have slip dresses right. or um, skirts. So you can kind of create the opposite. Instead of buying a skirt, you can use what you have and layer pieces on top of it like we did here. So this is more of a street style look, um, which is definitely more me, I love it. But um, the other thing you can do is we use this shirt in the uh, pre-recording that we did. Uh, this is from a store called Imperial. They have these one-of-a-kind tie-dye pieces, which I love. I'm also wearing um, one of their sweaters, Chanel. Uh, but you can buy these, and if the size looks big to you, a lot of people don't realize that you can take your own shirt to the alterations along with the large one, and they will size it down for you and create the exact same size for you. People don't realize that that's an option. So once you size it down, you could easily layer Interesting. it Interesting. So you take one of your own shirts that already fits. You can take this and, take that and create and it. this into an extra small. 
Yeah. Perfect. You could even turn it V-neck. You can do. You can. And the graphic tees again available at Imperial. Imperial. And they actually have their grand opening tomorrow on in Montrose. Okay. And Head I can't on believe I told you my secret. Now I'm going to have to fight for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh my gosh, Haley! Pieces. Thanks so much. You look great, girl. Okay. And our third model is Megan. No tie dye here, though. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. So this is kind of a, a lot of. This is a very common Step look behind. in the mm -hmm. spring and summer for girls. They put on a really pretty late dress, and then they put it on a pair of booties. One way to punch it up. It kind of goes with the Western theme. We have these Isabel Morant shoes. So it's a play on a booty, but it kind of puts you more on trend. And what you can do is add a statement jacket. Oh, that is definitely This is my a favorite. Statement. This is my favorite jacket. Super you know, cute. <laughs> the detailing on there is great. And then, obviously, Oh, the fanny pack. <laughs> I love a fanny you pack. You gotta have one. I you talked about that for me, didn't you, Mars? You know, I, love that. <laughs> I bought it for myself. I really want to keep it. Um, but you could also do it as a shoulder bag. And then when you turn around, it's super cute, and it makes such a statement in the back with the with the graphic here and the buttons. So you make a statement coming in. You make a statement leaving. You got all angles covered. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Yeah. The way you always do, Marzi. Uh, Colby, Haley, Megan, thanks so much. Y'all look great. And then did you want to mention uh, the shoes? The yes. Online? Oh, yeah. yes. So, okay, <laughs> we need to really watch everything because you have from Zara to H&M, so, everybody's yeah. got it, but, but you got you some also, cool shoes. Mm -hmm, you can go online and on the Real Real. We, uh, a friend of mine, she knows I'm obsessed with tie-dye. She knows I'm obsessed with pumps. She sent me the link to these. They're tie-dye manolos that somebody gave up and oh, wow. I claimed them. They're pretty. <laughs> 200 yeah. bucks, right? 200 bucks. So That's a good just, find. If you go online to these consignment shops and search the term um, tie-dye, you'd be surprised. You'd find, you'll would find find a bunch of treasures. Great stuff, Marzi. By the way, to keep up with Marzi and more information on today's looks, we've linked websites as well. Visit our site, HoustonLife.tv. Ladies, thanks so much. Keeping us looking fabulous. <laughs> thanks, Marzi. And coming up on Houston Life, a supper surprise. Diners were shocked to see the one and only Chuck Norris at a local Raising Cane's last night. We'll tell you why he was here. And tomorrow on the show, hit the road without getting hangry. Travel-friendly snacks that will help keep you full and satisfied when we come back. Okay, what do Chuck Norris and the restaurant Raising Cane's have in common? Well, they both love giving back to the Houston community. They certainly do. Chuck's Kickstart Kids program makes a huge impact here in our city, and now even more kids can be reached thanks to a brand new partnership. Today's a big day at Raising Cane's. They're not just serving up their famous chicken fingers, crinkle cut fries, and coleslaw. They're also getting a special visitor. Yup, that's Chuck Norris. Norris is best known as a martial arts expert and actor, but he's also on a mission to teach life-changing values to middle school and high school students. Back in 1990, along with George H.W. Bush, Norris started Kickstart Kids. More than 100,000 kids have gone through the program to date. We were able to get our program started here in Texas, and we started with one school, we started one school, and now we got 52 schools. And so it's great. And now, Raising Canes is stepping in with some major support, handing over a check for $100,000. Todd Graves is Raising Cane's founder and CEO. All right, it's a big day here at Raising Cane's. Not every day Chuck Norris stops by, huh, Todd? How incredible is that to have international icon Chuck Norris at Raising Cane's? It's huge. And you know, you're an icon yourself. You started Raising Cane's back in 1996. 23 years later, it's pretty staggering when people realize how many dollars you have pumped back into local communities. Why is that important to you as a business owner? You know, it was so hard for me to start the first Raising Cane's. I don't know if you know the story, but I had to go commercial fish in Alaska to raise money. I worked as a boiler maker in refineries in several different states. And so I think I never lost that sense of appreciation for the community supporting me. And so I, I always feel so fortunate every time we have restaurants. I mean, we have 430 restaurants right now, and every single one of me, I feel so appreciative. So that's what I think we should give back to the community and then give back to people that are really doing good things like Chuck Norris is with his Kickstart program. He sure is. And Kickstart Kids, today you guys presented a check, $100,000. That's going to help affect a lot of lives. Yeah, I mean, I thought what a great way to give back to the 100,000 kids that have already been part of this program with Chuck Norris, right? A dollar for each kid, and maybe that'll turn into another 100,000, which eventually hopefully turn into a million kids for him. You, know, you think about it. 
a man with that kind of stardom that spends his time taking care of kids and teaching the values that he learned through martial arts. And these kids wouldn't have this opportunity of that type of leadership. It's a great mentoring program, a great thing he's teaching these kids. And so I'm just really proud by all the Canes crew to help support Mr. Norris. Well, and it seems like such a great partnership. I think, you know, every Houstonian knows Raising Canes. You have hundreds of restaurants, even locations around the world. Right here in Houston, you have 37 locations. You employ more than 1,500 Houstonians. So for you, how meaningful is it to see that the dollars that you give back into the community really are going to good use? Oh, it's just, it, it makes me feel so proud, right? So we opened first restaurant on Westheimer. The community came out to support us. We opened the second one on Westheimer, then we kind of grew out. And today we're here at this Missouri City location. 37 restaurants means that we can do some great things in the community. This year, our goal is to do about $500,000 back to the greater Houston area, and we're on track to do that this year. So that's just a great sense of pride, you know, great sense of pride. But that's what we do. We have our restaurant managers that live here are into every one of their trade areas. Everyone, everyone's, they're part of the community. So it's just, it's, it's really what businesses should do. I mean, it also makes me feel really good. More than half a million dollars you guys will pump back into the Houston community. What about more locations? This year, this year. Well, yeah, just this year alone? Just this year. And new locations opening anywhere? Uh, well, I can't tell you the secret that is, but I, I think we're going to have probably eventually double the locations we have now. I think we'll be north of, yeah, we have close to about 70 locations before we're done. Not bad. Okay, last question, because I know you're a busy man. Did uh, Mr. Chuck Norris teach you any martial arts? Not yet, but I'm going to his karate school, the, you know, the kickstart program from here, and so I'm hoping I get a little bit of, you know, just, just a few, maybe a death grip, you know, maybe a chop or something, you know. The death grip always comes in handy. Todd, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for all you've done for the community. We'll see you next time. Thank you. We'll see you next time. And thanks for the kickstart uh, kids program, uh, getting them some more exposure. And if you have a kid that would be good to go in the kickstart program or helping out monetarily or volunteering, they go to the Kick, kickstart kids uh, website. There you go. Big star kids. Thanks, Todd. Thanks so much. It was such a fun that afternoon. That is so awesome. Yeah, it was great. Not every day that happens. No. You know? And for more info on Raising Canes and how they're giving back to the Houston community, you can go online to RaisingCanes.com or you can call 866-552-2637. And by the way, there is a Raising Canes employee named Carol Chin. Huge fan of Houston Life. She watches every day. Oh, we love Carol. Awesome. We certainly do. Okay, guys, next on Houston Life, a beginner's guide to long distance running, how to choose the right shoes, stretch the right way before and after that run. Much more when we come back. And just switching gears a little bit, we know once we get through all of this weather and the rain, uh, you may want to check a few things off your bucket list. And if running a few miles or even perhaps running a marathon one day is on that list, you want to be sure you're preparing your body safely and also effectively. After the rain stops, we're yep. all going to want to get outside, folks. Dr. Jaime Aparicio, sports physical therapist at the Ironman Sports Medicine Institute, is here with training tips for runners, especially if we are new to distance distance runners and there are so many things to think about from the heat to the gear where do we start yeah I think the thing that draws people to running is it's super accessible so all you really need is a good pair of shoes to yeah. start off with and so you head out the door with a good pair of shoes you know shoes do need to be replaced as you start the training training period right so the shoes aren't gonna last you through the whole training cycle depending on how many miles you're running and also in this Houston heat when the pavement's really hot it need to be replaced more and more often so general rule of thumb is about 300 to 400 600 miles or so uh, where you have to replace those shoes so you're getting back the same uh, comfort and also and stability support. that you had yeah. before. And it's really beneficial to go and get a fitting and not, you know, a customized to your foot, but how you run and how your foot impacts the ground, right? Makes a difference. Absolutely, absolutely. You can get a good uh, 2D gait analysis at most, uh, yeah, at my Moore Herman, we do 2D gait analysis, but also most running shoe stores should watch you walk uh, both with shoes and without the shoes and kind of let you know which way to go because there are different types of shoes, both from neutral shoes to stability shoes. There are a lot of tracking devices out there as well, speaking of gear that will monitor your distance and also your heart rate, your vitals, right? Absolutely. So a simple thing from a Garmin watch that has heart rate monitor built in, or you could buy a separate heart rate monitor. Also, they have the Fitbit trackers, but even your phone will have a activity tracker. It won't necessarily do your heart rate, but it'll allow you to track your progress and track your miles as you go out on the road. And third, we should really just set a goal. And this is really for anybody. If you're thinking of a full marathon or even just 
getting off the couch and running for just a little bit, right? Set a goal. Right, no, I think setting a goal is super important. Uh, having that goal ahead of you will allow you to give you that motivation, but also the accountability from your friends and from yourself, knowing that you have something to work towards and uh, make sure you're getting there safely and getting there appropriately, yeah. And doctor, you say consistency is key. We should be getting out there a few times per week. A lot of people may be wondering though, how far is too far maybe to push your body? Like, let's say you're not really a distance runner. You get out and you run two miles and you feel like you're gonna die. Yeah, I think even two miles may be more than some people can go at the very beginning. So I think starting with time is the most important. Like maybe you go out there for 15, 20 minutes until you feel like discomfort and then you stop there, maybe walk back to where your car was and then you slowly build on that. So little by little, you'll build up the mileage. I think at first you wanna go by time and then slowly get into the miles. But I think running at least two or three days a week, that consistency is where you'll start building the fitness. And you'll really notice a difference too. And what are your feelings on sort of like one minute on, two minutes off, and just kind of getting your body used to that? Yeah, no, I think that's great. That's a good way to kind of keep your heart rate at a minimum and also that you're not overexerting yourself. And then a good rule of thumb also is that can you have a conversation while you're running? So if you have a friend with you, can you hold that conversation? If you start getting out of breath, you're no longer hold the conversation, you're probably doing a little too much. And the on and the off, just to clarify, means like you run and then you walk and then you run and then you walk, right? So right. So if you feel discomfort or a problem, Problem, it's okay to walk for a minute. It's definitely okay to walk. You're moving, you're putting time on your feet. It's really, really good for you just to kind of continue moving and get there slowly but surely. It's better to do that too little than too much. And if you are on that training schedule, a rest day is very important, isn't it? Rest days are very important. Research is showing more and more that rest is almost should be as part of your training plan as the running itself. So good night's sleep. Also, you can get some naps in, but really getting that sleep or that rest is where the body's gonna recover and be able to get you to the next day. And fueling your body oh. properly. Yeah. I mean, when you're resting on the couch, we shouldn't be downing like a box of like Oreos. Oreos. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know, because we love them. <laughs> no Oreos. Uh, good fuel, good, good food for good, your body. Good clean food and fueling your body, making sure you're getting good carbohydrates, but also just good, well balanced meal. What about these um, like sports drinks, the electrolytes and you know, uh, what are your feelings on those? So I think sports drinks are important. They have a place. So when we're out here, especially in the Houston heat and humidity, we're losing electrolytes. We're losing those salts and, and we need to get that balance back or else we're not gonna be able to perform. So using some electrolytes is good. General rule of thumb is to kind of drink to thirst, um, but also those electrolytes will kind of help replenish those sodium that we're losing. I wanna talk very quickly just about uh, cross training and stretching. So because there, there are different schools of thought on stretching, but you say it's very important to stretch before and after? So yeah, before and after. So before you wanna do more of a dynamic stretch, you're trying to prime the nervous system, get those muscles getting ready to move. So think about skips, kind of leg swings, those kind of things. After the run, it's really good to do the static stretching. Those are the stretches that you're holding for a long time, so a minute or so, 30 seconds, and that's where you're gonna get some flexibility from the tissue as it's heated up and it's able to kind of be a little bit more malleable, so. And were you going to show us some sort of stretch? Yeah, so I think besides stretching, I think cross-training is super important. So what I do with a lot of my runners is we work with weights. It's really important to load. We're taking lots of loads while we're running, so about two times to four times body weight. So I brought a weight here. Okay. And another thing that's super important is single leg stability. So if you mind, do you mind taking off your shoes? Oh, no I could run a marathon in these. Now you really so know how the, short I am. the feet are the foundation of the runner, right? That's what's hitting the ground first. Is what's going to take most of the... I'm going to give you this, Derek. Sure. So. so the first thing is, can you stand on one leg? You'd be surprised at how many runners I work with that can't stand on one leg. And can you bring your other leg up so that your core is kind of engaged? Good, good. Where am I holding And up? so now you're putting the weight down like this. And now all I want you to do is go into a, a, a movement here that we call like a single leg deadlift. So go all the way down, yep. And now Derek, can you row with that weight up? So upper body is just as important as lower body. And then you're gonna come all the way back up to return. Really, really good. And then back down. Oh, wow. So these are complex movements that include multiple joints, but you're working the foot muscles as well. Do you feel your feet working? Yeah, it definitely yeah. takes some focus. Do you want to try it? Sure. I know we're out of time. So why don't you work on that, Courtney, as we go to <laughs> commercial break. And folks, Dr. Aparicio is going to stick around. After the break, he's got seven tips to consider before running outside as the heat arrives, folks. Very important info. Don't go away. I'm just stretching. Great job. Here we go. How's it feel? 
Welcome back. Every year when summer approaches, many folks spend more time outside running, but as those temperatures rise, it is so important that we adapt to that warmer weather. Dr. Jaime Aparicio, sports physical therapist at the Ironman Sports Medicine Institute, is back now. We've got seven tips to help you run in the heat safely. It's a coming, and that's one thing we have to remember is keep it safe. Yeah, as the heat approaches, our bodies aren't going to be very efficient. We, this, we're in this transition period now, like in the middle of these months, that we haven't had a lot of heat to train in. We've had a lot of cold weather, and we're about to get a lot of heat. So when we go out there, it's, we're not going to be as efficient of a runner as we were in the winter. Yeah. Because our body's going to be using that blood to now cool our body instead of feed our muscles. So interesting. And does it really take a few weeks for our bodies to adapt to that heat? Yeah, it does. And so we go out into the heat, and as we go out into the heat and start running in the heat, our body starts getting more efficient at running in the heat. And it takes about, about 14 days to get that adaptation, and that's with consistent running in the heat. And again, you have to be safe. You want to make sure that you're not exposing yourself to too much heat too quickly, but yeah. little by little, you'll get more efficient at running in the heat. And you say, too, always run with a buddy. Always run it with a buddy. I think especially in the hot environments, it's not only for safety, but it gives you that motivation to keep on going. If you're running by yourself in the heat, it can get really taxing and kind of get demotivated. Um, so I think not only for safety, but also for that motivation. Pattern. What about the distance and the time that we run? Because oftentimes on a beautiful spring day, you feel unstoppable. You're out there. But as it heats up... July and August. <laughs> yeah, should we be keeping these same goals, running the same distance we typically do in cooler weather? I would say initially no. So uh, since our body's going to be less efficient at running, I think you need to slow down the pace. If you try to run the same pace you're running in the winter, I think you're going to do yourself a disservice. You'll, you'll feel demotivated. You're not going to be able to perform as well. Also, the distances. You want to make sure you're running in a place that you're familiar with, has water stops, maybe shaded, so like Memorial Park or Herman Park, and know where the water stops are so that you can make sure that you're running in a safe distance before you get to the next hydration spot. Yeah. And you already talked about staying hydrated, but that's also, I mean, what do we do maybe the day before we're going to go on a run or even a long run? Is there an actual formula to figure out how much we should be drinking? Well, yeah, there is. You can find out your sweat loss formula and kind of see how much you're sweating, and that takes some calculations that, that you can find online. But I think an initial like general rule of thumb is to make sure you're pre-hydrating, so hydrate the day before. A good way to find out if you're hydrated is by looking at your urine output. Is yep. your, what color is your urine? Is it clear? Is it yellow? Clear, is it right? really dark? The clearer it is, the more hydrated you are, the safer you will be once you get out there. So You've brought along some gear to help us stay protected in the heat. Everything from shoes all the way up to sun protection. So let's start over here with these shoes. Yeah, so the shoes is just very simple, but they have to realize that these shoes, they have... Uh, different density foams and those foams will wear out in the heat as you're running so depending on the type of density it is and the material it's made out of you want to replace these shoes and a good running store will be able to fit you into the right shoes they know exactly we'll be able to look and how you're running and put you on a treadmill and kind of see exactly how you're running and the clothing here too you're protected obviously from the sun but you want clothes that are going to breathe correct yeah so instead of like a cotton t-shirt it's just going to be soaked and kind of weigh you down as you sweat these these materials here are very very light nature but they also bring that moisture away into the surface to wick it away from your skin so you can kind of cool and evaporate uh, correctly. Let's quickly run through uh, these final few. This is actually a handheld water bottle. Yeah, a handheld water bottle has a place for your uh, ID card or your phone, but it's also important since these water stops aren't replacing electrolytes. It's, you may want to take an electrolyte drink in a handheld water bottle so you can replace the sodium that you're losing in the run. Uh, so that's very, very convenient. It's not that heavy and doesn't really affect your running form. Another pair, good pair of sunglasses. Uh, these are gooder glasses. They're kind of known in the running community as not only being inexpensive, but they don't bounce on your head, mm -hmm. so they're very comfortable, uh, protecting the eyes. This is a sun hat, so this hat has a uh, neck, protection. neck protection on the back, so not only protecting you from the sun, but it also has lots of ventilation, kind of help keep you cool. And doctor, you've got some sun protection for the arms there. You pull those right on. We're out of time, so we got to leave it there, but yeah. in the meantime, if you would like to connect with Dr. Aparicio, be sure to visit the Scene on Houston Life section of the website. Thank you again for stopping by. Thank you all for having me. I appreciate it. Great, Great information. Well, skip the tantrums. The next time you sit down for a family meal after the break, three easy recipes that are toddler approved. We'll be right back. Whether you have picky eaters at home or you just can't decide what to make for mealtimes, our next guest is here to help. Cookbook author and mom of two, Leanne Chetanier, is joining us now with three easy recipes that are certified toddler approved. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. This could really be kind of a headache, nightmare situation, especially for a toddler when you're mixing in new foods. You say this is foolproof. These are foolproof recipes, and it's also a great way to get veggies into your toddler, too, without any fuss. So I'm all about doing that, starting with these little mini pizzas that are so great. They're Green Monster Pesto English Muffin Pizzas. So they're great for lunch boxes. 
Um, and then your kids can also help you do them. So I feel like if they're in the kitchen with you, they're right. more likely to eat it Absolutely. as well. They get excited about yes. it, right? And so one thing about this pesto is I put equal parts spinach and basil. So you're getting that big dose of spinach and extra nutrients in the pesto. So all we're gonna do is we have equal parts spinach and basil. And if I can get you guys to help me out, yeah. we're gonna add in some Parmesan right and here, olive right? oil too. Yes, uh-huh. And okay. olive oil? Yep, and that's How much salt. olive oil? Just do about like three or four rounds. Three I like to start rounds. a little on the low side and then we're gonna add more if we need it. And then the pine, pine nuts? nuts. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna just put that on there. Actually, I'm gonna need your help with yes. this. Yes, here, <laughs> we're just gonna do it like this. It's not ours. Yes. <laughs> and then you're just Food gonna let it go until it looks like, and we'll just stop it there, until it looks like this. Pesto is so yes. fast and easy to make. And you okay. can freeze it too, whatever you have yes, left over. Yes, you can. So it's just pesto. I did roast some tomatoes here, so we're just gonna spread the pesto on, add some cheese, some roasted tomatoes, and then peas for another veggie that kids love. Peas. And quite honestly, you could really add anything to yes, this, right? Yes, yes, yes. You can totally customize this based upon what your family's preferences are, what your kids love. And like I said, just make them help you in the kitchen Adults with this. Adults would love this too, by the oh, way. Yeah. This is it. delicious. Yes, it's one of, I mean, we eat them all the time. It is delicious. It's great as an easy a dinner run. with a salad on the side, and you got mm. dinner is done and done. Strawberry oh. parfait. Yeah, so one of the things I love to do is make my own strawberry jam, and if you add chia seeds, you don't have to have a gelatin because it will make it solidify. Genius. Yes, yeah, so it's a natural sweetener, no sugar added jam, which I love. So I have two cups of fresh strawberries. We're going to add two tablespoons of chia seeds. Okay. A little bit of water. Just, you want all of mm -hmm. this? Okay. Yep. About a quarter cup. Okay. And then I have some maple syrup here. You can leave this out. If your strawberries are in season like they are right now, you may not need it. So you can adjust that based upon, again, your sweetness preference. And you're just going to put that on a stove, let it simmer. Okay. And then it's going to thicken like that and you can puree it if you like a smoother consistency or you can leave it chunky. And okay. how long do you cook it down? Um, just about five minutes. It'll go pretty quick. Oh. So one of the things I like to do with it is make a cottage cheese parfait, which is great for uh, breakfast or lunches. So we have cottage cheese. You add some of the strawberry jam, and then you can put pineapples, granola. You can add anything that you want there to make a really yummy um, breakfast or lunch. And it's beautiful. It yes. is very pretty. Restaurant quality. Yes. All of it is, actually. Mm. Okay, what do you have to cook okay, up Okay, so I'm making some veggie-loaded turkey sloppy joes, and these are great for a family meal. And I love to just um, amp up the nutrients here by adding lots of veggies. So I have in carrots, zucchini, mushrooms. And did you food process these? Because yes. it's real fine. Yes, I did. Okay. Which is another tip for kiddos. I find if the texture, if they don't have chunks of veggies in there, they're more likely to eat it. So you're just going to add in your veggies to that ground turkey, and you're going to saute it up. And then we're going to add in some ketchup and barbecue sauce. Oh, yeah. And while you guys are mixing that up, Congrats, Leanne, on having your cookbook re-released. Thank I you. Know. Yes. So it's the second edition. So we added in a lunchbox and snack, or snack uh, chapter so that it really evolves with your child. As they get older, this book will really carry you through all of that. It's called so. First Bites, by the way. Yes, and the new edition is Natural Baby and Toddler Treats. So we, we upped the title so it kind of spoke more to just more than baby food. Right. Um, so this is chili powder and coconut sugar that we're adding in here. And the coconut sugar adds just a little bit of sweetness that kids love. I'm still eating this uh, this first one. By the way, we do have the complete recipes and more info on our website, yep. HoustonLife.tv. As Leanne, you finish up your Yes, dish. yes. I know, it's beautiful. It smells so good. Thanks yes. so much for coming in. Oh, Congratulations thank you for having on the cookbook me. as well. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back. We're going to finish our lunch. Yeah. Thanks, Leanne. And yes. you can keep working awesome. on that. Yeah, you will. Well. Yeah, yeah. This needs this is my second one, Leanne. These are so delicious. I'm so glad. That makes me so happy. And just to remind our viewers, Natural Baby and Toddler Treats yeah. is the new edition of your book. It's available on Amazon, right? Yes, it sure is. The link awesome. for the cookbook and also the recipes for these three things on our website. Thanks for joining us today. And stay safe in the rain, folks. Yes, please Buckle do. Up. We'll see you tomorrow.